the sanitary maintenance and cleaning industry has seen a major influx of female professionals enter the industry over the past few years. But how are women not only supported, but encouraged to remain in the industry, industry and develop a skill set for success? In this episode of ISSA Canada's Coffee Talk Forum, we will take a look at ISSA's Hygiene Network, an ISSA signature charity. Featuring special guests, Dr. Felicia Townsend, Shannon Hall, and Judith Varag, we will look at what Hygiea is, the programs it offers, and how the community is making a difference to many women in the industry today. As program director of the ISSA Hygiea Network, Dr. Felicia Townsend oversees Hygiea's educational programming, eight regional communities, and a mentoring program all geared toward women at various levels in the cleaning industry. She collaborates with over 40 corporate leaders who serve as volunteers across six Hygiea committees, council, and the executive advisory board. Before starting her career at ISSA, Felicia served 15 years in higher education, serving the adult learner in director and assistant dean roles at a community college, as well as private and state universities. Shannon Hall is vice president of sales for Dustbane Products Limited and captain of the newly created ISSA Hygiea Network Canada region. Shannon is a transformational sales leader with over 20 years sales leadership. Working for several Fortune 500 companies, as well as private businesses, she has been tasked with delivering results, building high-performing sales teams, and creating a sales and customer-focused culture. Judith Varag is the owner of Clean Club Calgary, a residential commercial cleaner in Calgary, Alberta. Winner of the Women of Inspiration Customer Experience Award, Judith is passionate about the cleaning industry and this passion is reflective in everything she does. Not only is she an active member of the ISSA Canada Residential Cleaning Committee, she is also a mentor in ISSA Hygiea Network's mentoring program. Welcome everybody. Thank you. Hi. So I guess the best place to start any, any story would be at the beginning. So Felicia, how about you tell us about the, the Hygiea Network, what it is, you know, what the program is, what, what are the goals and that kind of thing. Sure, sure. Well, Tanya, thank you so much uh, for, for having me here today uh, to talk about the Hygiea Network. And for those of you uh, who don't know, Hygiea Network is a part of ISSA Charities, which Tanya mentioned is one of our uh, signature programs. So uh, just to give you some historical context, um, uh, the Hygiea Network was actually formed in 2015 uh, and created by uh, the former CEO of Diversi. Her name was uh, is Ilham Kadri. Um, so her goal was to help you know advance women in the industry and coming up with a, a solution and a way to make that happen. So she served for several years um, as the leader of Hygieia, and in roughly 2017 2018. Um, Meredith Rubin, uh, one of our pioneers in the industry, um, started as our chair uh, of the council for Hygieia. So she served for several years. Um, and the ultimate goal was to help us to, you know, continue our work to advance uh, women um, throughout the industry. So what is our mission? Um, our mission is to provide programs, tools, and support uh, that enable women um, in all phases of their, their career uh, to accelerate. Um, and so we do that with the assistance of a very phenomenal and dedicated council, uh, which is comprised of 15 leaders um, who serve in various uh, roles throughout the industry in various sectors. Um, our current co-chairs uh, of the council are Laura Craven, who is the VP of Marketing Communications at Imperial Dade, um, and Linda Silverman is the president of Main Tech Inc. So they are our leaders uh, for Hygieia. Um, they have definitely laid the foundation. We also have an executive advisory board, uh, which as you see is, is comprised of like the who's who um, in the cleaning industry. Um, they help us you know, develop our strategy uh, that will move Hygieia uh, forward um, in the years to come. 
Um, and then, of course, we have various committees. I know Tanya mentioned six. Actually, we just added one more recently. <laughs> so Hygieia has seven uh, committees, um, uh, which is an education committee, which covers all of our webinars. We have a mentoring committee, uh, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. We also have a regional networking committee that oversees our conferences, uh, virtual and in person. We have an event committee that oversees our awards reception at the show. Uh, we also have a finance committee, a recruitment and onboarding committee, and also an executive leadership committee. So as you see, there's a lot. And those committees actually aid us in implementing the programs that you see here on the screen. I always like to say that these are considered to be Hygieia signature programs. Uh, we have virtual and in-person conferences. Uh, this is where we bring together um, inspiring leaders from across the industry. They can be men or women um, come together and they share information about the path that they've taken in their careers. Uh, we also have webinars that are led by um, industry professionals and subject matter experts um, that cover various topics of interest to, to women uh, in the industry, as well as men, of course. Um, and then, of course, we have a mentoring program. And this is a very popular program. Uh, this program was started in 2018. And it's really one of the major uh, signature programs for Hygieia mm -hmm. because we offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring opportunities uh, for leaders to connect with professionals in the industry so they can provide insight on you know, the things that they should do in their careers to be successful. Uh, within our mentoring program, uh, we also uh, last year implemented an ex exclusive mentoring program. Uh, what this does is, is allow our uh, sponsor companies uh, to use our mentoring platform as a way to connect employees within their own organization. So you may have Bob, who is a CEO at a company, and he's connected with Mary, um, who is a mentee. And so uh, it's a very robust program, and we hope to bring on more of our sponsors to take advantage of our exclusive program. And then of course we have our regional communities and I'm so excited about this because we just started this last year. And so we actually have seven Hygieia Network uh, US regions, okay? And then we also just brought on um, Canada uh, a few months ago and Shannon will give you all the details. This thing was so fast moving. <laughs> I love working with Shannon and, and Tanya, so it was really quick. Um, but really the goal of the regions is to provide you know, resources where people can come together on LinkedIn, for example. Each of these regions have their own group on LinkedIn and um, users can actually go in, they can share resources, they can post content, um, they can learn about our upcoming events. Um, and then also too, a part of the regions is the in-person activities. Um, and this is where, for example, Canada, um, under the leadership of Shannon and Tanya, they recently had a, uh, a reception in Calgary. And so we want all of our regions to do more of those networking type of opportunities um, just to give people exposure to Hygieia and all that we have uh, to offer. Also too, um, Hygieia has an annual awards reception. I am so proud of this program. Um, it is the who's who in the cleaning industry. Uh, we all come together um, during the ISSA show North America. Uh, this year, of course, it'll be held in Chicago at the McCormick Place. And it's an opportunity for people to celebrate um, individuals and companies in the industry who are awarded with the Hygieia Rising Star, uh, Company of the Year, and Member of the Year. Mm -hmm. So it's a ceremony, but it's also a great networking opportunity. Um, we do encourage people when time, uh, when the time is right to actually nominate people uh, for these prestigious awards. I mean, we have a rising star, um, which is actually just a phenomenal way to recognize a, a woman in the early stages of her career. Oh, no. um, this year, this is that is 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 moving okay. forward. You know, diversity, equity, and inclusion within their organization, and then the member of the year. You know, this is the person who's really doing all that they can to help Hygieia uh, accomplish its mission to advance women in the industry. 
So um, that's uh, the program aspect of Hygieia. And I want to close um, with a way that all of our constituents in the U.S. and in Canada uh, can join. Um, you can go to hygienetwork.org forward slash join um, and fill out the information. You will be added to our database and you'll get, you know, updates about upcoming events, um, programming in terms of our conferences and webinars. You'll receive information about our mentoring program. Uh, and it's just an, a, another way to stay in the know of, of what's happening uh, with Hygieia. So that is Hygieia. Wonderful. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's and there's so much more I know. Yeah, so, it so is. Should, just out of curiosity, you know, you have you have you show such a passion for this for this program. I'm just curious, how did you get involved with the Hygiene Network? Like, what does yeah. this program mean to you? Well, you know what? Uh, that's an excellent question. And, you know, as you stated a while ago, um, I started with Hygiene in 2019. And I decided in my career that I was going to be transitioning away from higher education. You know, I served for 15 years there and did some phenomenal work. But my passion will always remain in terms of serving the adult population, the adult learner. And so when I was given this opportunity to join Hygieia as the program director, it really fit very well in terms of my progression in my career. Um, in the past, I've developed customized training programs for corporations, uh, for school districts, for nonprofit organizations. Um, I also uh, developed a mentoring program for a school district. And so if you're listening closely, some of those saying things uh, is basically what I'm doing with the Hygieia Network. I strongly believe in just taking your knowledge and just being able to transfer it over into another area. And so it, it's been great. Um, in terms of what Hygieia means to me, um, it's a couple things. I, when, I, when I read that question before, I was like, okay, what does it mean to me? <laughs> uh, it means you know, providing women with access to information um, through the information that we share with our conferences, our programming, best practices, um, it means really just giving opportunity and allowing women to have a voice um, in terms of, you know, what they want to see happen within their organizations um, as it relates to, um, you know, diversifying that pool of women who need to matriculate more in, in the industry. Um, and it just means just, you know, really just giving everyone an opportunity to share. Um, and that's what Hygieia is about. And I tell people that Hygieia is, is an organization that is really hands-on. And so when we talk about our conferences, our webinars, um, networking opportunities, you know, we also provide opportunities for the user or the person who's attending our events to participate, you know, to, you know, uh, lend their support when we talk about our breakout sessions. Give your opinion about what you want to see happen. Um, we want you to participate in our regional community. So yeah. uh, it's about everybody playing a role there. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So Shannon, you've been a big cheerleader for the ISSA Hygieia Network and a driving force to have this Canada region created. So what, what has your experience looked like over the span with your career at, at Dustbane? You know, it's, it's been such an amazing opportunity to join this industry. And one of the challenges that I did see was there wasn't a network for all of us women to get together and really find those ways to help with recruitment and selection. When it came to females, there wasn't a heightened awareness about what the opportunities look like in this industry. And in Canada specifically, I think what we see is the majority of the organizations that make up this industry tend to be a little bit smaller and they might not have that same level of support as they may be able to get to in other countries. So we really wanted to create a network that was part of ISSA Canada as well as ISSA throughout the US and bring the Hygieia network together, really help women have a voice, but also make sure that we were finding ways to help mentor, develop, and really just connect. We needed time, especially through COVID, to find ways to reconnect. And this is such a great forum to be able to do that. And just to give Canada a little bit of a voice where sometimes we might feel like 
we're not seen because we tend to be a smaller part of a region or a country. And it's just such a great opportunity when you see the programming that's behind what Hygieia has to offer. I don't think that any one organization can offer this experience quite the way that we're getting this today. And so specific and tailored to our industry, it's incredible. That's awesome. So Judith, you too have been a huge cheerleader, not only for women to, women to succeed, but also for the entire cleaning industry. So you, you just have a passion to contribute to the industry and, and you know, help anyone looking for, for tips. So how, I'm, I'm not, I can honestly say I'm not really surprised to see you involved in the mentor program, but how did you get involved with the hygiene? And what does, and what does, what's your experience been like in the industry? Unmute. <laughs> I was so ready. <laughs> uh, so I got involved last year uh, at the ISSA show uh, where I ran into the uh, booth and I had a really nice chat with the ladies there and they were right away sent me um, the link to apply and I did. Um, my, my experience is very positive with the industry. I've been in the cleaning industry for 12 years I think in a, uh, about 10 years in, uh, sorry, two years into my business, I discovered ISSA and I, it just was the lifeline because as a business owner, um, it's just so hard um, when you're running the business on your own and you're making decision, you're always questioning yourself. Am I making the right decision for my team? And this network allows me to reach out and ask questions. How do you do this? How do you deal with this? Can you give me some experience sharing? Can you give me some advice? You know, because experience sharing and advice is very different. Not everybody's open to either or. So it's really good to set that conversation up right away just to see well, how do you learn better. And uh, I, it's been great for me to be in the, in this industry. And, and uh, you know, um, I'm an avid learner. So I always, and the way I learned is always from someone else. So from my teachers, from my teammates and things like that. So this network really gives that opportunity. Wow, that's awesome. So you guys, you guys both like, as active participants in the ISSA Hygieia Network, how long have you been involved with Hygieia and, and what has the program offered to you thus far? So when I first was introduced to Hygieia, it was when it was launched at ISSA. And I remember thinking, this is incredible. What a great way for us to get together. And then it kind of petered off for a little bit that we, we didn't have a lot of engagement or I didn't have a lot of participation in it. I have seen the content creation over the last year and a half, I'd say, really scale. And there was a lot of opportunity to connect and do some of the virtual events that, you know, were women within our industry or adjacent industries giving advice and talking about their experience and finding some coaching opportunities that were in there that weren't expensive. Because often when you attend these things, sometimes the cost can be prohibitive of a lot of organizations joining. So with no cost to the membership, uh, that was a great point of entry. But then to see some of the content and some of the speakers that they had has been really amazing. I ended up, I guess it was this summer, uh, I'm covering a little bit more about the mentoring program and finding some ways to connect. And I am so pleased to be able to be a mentor within this program, but I would also enjoy being a mentee in this program because there's so many different individuals that you can learn from both male or female, but I don't think that within our or organizations that we necessarily want to get mentoring within our organization from that same person, because you don't sometimes get those outside experiences that you do within this, within this program. It feels like such a safe space. And I love the way that the platform has been put together to make connections so easy and so well organized. So great job, Felicia, on that. I find it so, it, I love that it pops up in my calendar. I've got everything organized with my mentee for the next six months. 
months so that we know when we're going to meet, what we're going to connect with. And I love hearing her journey and her stories and how her career is just soaring. And, you know, when opportunities came up to be able to just coach through some of those interview questions that might be coming up and really find a way to just give back to each other. We both get so much out of it that I don't know really who's the mentor or the mentee in the relationship. It really is that two-way street and it's great. How about you, Judith? So um, I just started um, last fall, as I had mentioned. Um, I have been mentored before and I have mentored people and I just see such a big value in it. For me, first of all, to meeting, I met Shannon a long time ago and she's a firecracker. So, as you know, and I'm a pretty strong personality, but when I look at Shannon, for example, she's so puts herself out there so much and she's so outspoken and it's so nice to see. So this is what it's giving me as a mentor. It's giving me that courage to put myself out there as well, uh, which I did before, but she just gives that, that extra umph and definitely the networking. And also I really do think that our industry is not as regulated as other industries. So therefore we don't have educational pieces out there. Like you don't, for example, in the residential cleaning, you don't go to um, college or, or even state or, or anywhere to, to learn to be a cleaner. So, um, or a business owner, sometimes also that is difficult. So it's really good to have these group of people that you can learn from because there's such a big wealth of knowledge. And I think people miss that, that this is, is something free. This is something invaluable that you get. It's almost like a MasterCard commercial, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to me. And and I I I just love to be a part of it. I love to be mentored. Uh, I love to mentor people. Um, I, because you always learn. You always always learn. Absolutely. No kidding. So Felicia, I I know that the program is is geared towards women, but. Uh, it is open to men as well, correct? Sure, sure. It, it really is. You know, and I always tell people that the focus is on women, but men are welcome, of course. And, and one of the things I will say is that, you know, all of our programming, I would honestly say 30% of the attendees are men. OK, because uh, some of these men, of course, they lead teams uh, of women. Um, and so they use this opportunity to attend our programming to learn about the concerns and some of the challenges um, that some of these women are facing in the industry. And I do want to say that, um, you know, last year, Hygieia, uh, some of Hygieia sponsor companies participated in McKinsey's uh, Women in the Workplace study. Um, and that's one of the largest studies that's done um, to have a better understanding of the dynamics of what's happening with uh, women uh, in various corporate settings. Hmm. And so one interesting thing that was brought up uh, within the study um, is that, you know, there's what's called a broken rung. Um, and really that means that, hmm. you know, women are underrepresented from moving into that entry to that management role. And we need to fix that. How can we move more women, um, you know, up in various levels of their careers? Because when that happens, you know, women at the higher level are being impacted because they didn't enter. So, so there's no progression at all. Um, and so I will say that, you know, we came up with the idea of having a CEO roundtable. Um, to have McKinsey come and kind of give a report on the findings. And 50% of the attendees of the CEOs who were there were men. So they were able to take that information. Um, and we all talked together about some of the solutions and things that we can do uh, within their organizations to bring about change. Um, so we use all of those different types of opportunities, either as a round table or it's a networking event, uh, we use these opportunities to bring different voices to the table, you know? So it's not all about the women because women have to work with men. Yeah. Um, and, and some men have to lead women in, in some scenarios. So they need to have a better understanding uh, of what the needs are. 
So would you say that the Hygieia Network and the programming that it offers, has it lent a hand in shifting the business culture when it comes to not only women in the industry, but, but more diverse individuals as well? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a work in progress because, you know, when I think about, let's just focus on women, for example, I like to say that there are different types of women. Uh, you know, you have women, you know, from different ethnicities, uh, di- different, you know, uh, religion backgrounds, different, uh, you know, uh, sexual orientations. And then, of course, you have men who have their own set of, of, um, of things as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you bring all those pieces together, you know, it, it kind of lends itself to a, a r- very good way to kind of move our mission forward. What we try to do in our program is set the stage for conversation to continue within various communities. So when we talk about pay disparity, when we talk about bias, when we talk about discrimination, we talk about all these issues, you know, we would hope that, you know, the folks who are attending our events will go back into the workplace and change the culture if it needs to be changed in some sort of way um, by making an impact, by saying, you know, I attended a Hygieia program. We, we talked about, you know, biased, uh, you know, a, a tort women or a women of color or what have you. What are you doing with that information? And how are you, you know, transferring what you learned into your organization that will help to, you know, to help other people who are from different um, diverse backgrounds to uh, to achieve success? Wow, that's awesome. So, how does the the ISSA Hygieia Network empower women for success? Oh wow, <laughs> you know that's, that's so really Felicia. Good. I know you got it in you. <laughs> I got it because I'll tell you, we we do empower women through other women. Um, so for example, when we hold our, our virtual and our in-person conferences and our webinars, you know, we actually tap women leaders who have been there and done that, so to speak. Um, so we want people who are from the industry, if they're not from the industry, you know, we want them to, to be subject matter experts. And these women actually come together and they share their stories. And I'm going to give you an example, uh, because I listen to what people say very closely. (laughs) So, I mean, you can say one phrase and I will take that phrase and it will impact me and it will motivate and empower me. Um, prime example, during our uh, 2021 ISSA show in, uh, we held in, in uh, Vegas, uh, one of our speakers on who served on our DEI panel, her name is Kimberly Morgan. I, I hope it's okay, Kim, that I'm saying your name. Uh, she's a senior diver- uh, director of diversity, equity, and inclusion at Gojo Industries. And uh, the moderator posed a question to her in terms of, you know, why are you so successful? What makes you a success? And she said two words. She said, stay ready. I stay ready. And I'm going to tell you, when she said that, it resonated with me. Okay, me. Okay, so I would imagine that there are other situations where our leaders are coming forth and they're sharing their stories or they're making one little phrase or a quote that will impact someone. I, I told her this before, that those two words, I mean, it's like, stay ready in your career, stay ready, be prepared, yeah. you know, stay ready, move forward. You know, it was really, it just that really, comment so. is actually giving me goosebumps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, I totally, I totally get that. So yeah. did, Judith, how has, how has the, the Hygieia Network empowered you as a business owner, as a member of this industry? Um, I think it's just so nice to have something like this at your back pocket because you can always pull it out when you have a hard day. You need to, you know, you can reach out to your mentor or the mentee can reach out to their mentor and have those tough conversations, those questions um, and just have a discussion. And a lot of times it's just really about talking to somebody. And so the network itself, I think it's crucial, especially to me as a business owner, because as I had mentioned, you know, you know, the phrase it's lonely at the top. It is really lonely at the top. (laughs) I might have a big team, but there's a lot of things that I can, you know, discuss with them that are challenges. Or sometimes also, I think as women feel um, when something good happens, that we're bragging, 
and and you don't you don't talk about that you just you just brush over that that's like it's like a normal thing happened that you know i hit you know 18 employees or or whatever that is or i'm really hitting my numbers that i you know it's almost like bragging or you know we have five star reviews or or anything like that it just becomes the norm when i think we also have to talk about successes because we also learn from successes oh, okay you got there how did you get there tell me more right exactly exactly how about you shannon you know, it, it's been really, um, really interesting. I think there's been so much that have come out of it. I love the community. The fact that, you know what, my competitors have some great females on their team that I probably, because we're competitors, don't get enough opportunity to spend some time with. But this is giving us a community in which we can all get together in the same space with shared ideas. And I think that's been amazing. The personal brand aspect of it has also been really exciting I have so many people that are connecting with me because they want to learn more about how we can help each other and help women within our industry, both male and female say, what can we do about this challenge that we're facing with recruiting the right talent or mm-hmm. taking the talent that we have and helping them soar within their career and elevate. So I think that has been such an impactful part of it, but yeah. it's also the level of expertise that it shows when you're involved in an organization that is part of ISSA, it gives you instant credibility with people that you're part of a community and a network that are professionals within our industry. And that probably leads to a little bit more credibility and the fact that you are going to stay in this industry. So um, all the way around, I think this has been a tremendous experience. And I really hope that we have more women in Canada join our network to be able to experience some of this and share their wealth of experience with others it's just such a great time that's awesome so you know you 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 talk about challenges so over the course of of both of your careers judith and and shannon what what kind of challenges do you hear from other women in the industry wow there's a lot i mean some of it is not being seen not being heard not really feeling like they have that ability or empowerment to be actually able to advocate for themselves and for their organization. And that is truly a challenge that we've been facing that we need to combat. And I think that being part of Hygieia, as Judith touched on earlier, it gives you that confidence and that ability and other people to lean on that can help you with some of that skill set. So I think early in my career, I really felt that, um, you know, there just wasn't that safe space. It wasn't as welcoming as it could be for females in our industry. And it's one thing on the chemical side, it's been very interesting on the equipment side. It's even more uh, focused that women are often seen as not being able to utilize heavy pieces of equipment that drive productivity. (laughs) Well, there's, there's certainly a problem there because it's often it comes up when we're actually demonstrating that piece of equipment. And it's like, we, we need to fix some of those things. So I think there's just that optics that it's time to break those biases and break those barriers and really allow for the women in our industry to succeed. Absolutely. How about you, Judith? I just giggle here because Shannon, you should see me driving some of your <laughs> right on cleaner and whatnot. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and you know what? I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, my background, I was a tomboy. I grew up with men. So I, I experienced this a little bit differently. But what I see is um, exactly the confidence piece that you have touched on, is that um, sometimes women, especially when you're young, you're coming into the industry, um, you're, women tend to be very shy and very reserved and they don't want to speak out yet in meetings and things like that. So I think this, this program is just building up, up that confidence that it's okay to speak up. It's okay to say your name. It's okay to say where you're from and what is your experience because you might be young, but you might have already gone through something that is going to be very valuable for somebody else. So I think the, um, Definitely, um, that's what I see women struggling with. 
And, uh, and uh, for me, I, I love it. Some days I'm in the, in the office and some days I'm on a forklift uh, with a hard head and <laughs> still toe boots and I do my thing and I love it. I absolutely love it. So I think it's just giving that confidence to women that they can do it. So Felicia, just out of curiosity, the challenges that you hear from from women in in the Canadian industry, do these challenges cross borders and do women in the U.S. face these same challenges or do they do they have other things that that are top of mind for for them? What do you you hear? Oh, God, I'm hearing everything that Judith and Shannon mentioned. I mean, so one thing in addition to what they've stated and it ties in with what they stated is impostural, imposture syndrome. You know, really feeling like you don't belong at the table or you don't belong in a certain situation. Um, and, you know, I hear that quite a bit. I mean, so when we have our breakout sessions um, during our conferences, that term actually comes up quite a bit. You know, I feel like an imposter. I feel like I don't belong here. Um, also, burnout is starting to come up into the conversation. And I'm sure in Canada yeah. or across the world, um, that is something that women um, are and men, sure, I would imagine, are experiencing as well. Um, and so we do try to develop programming uh, to address some of these issues. And it's so interesting that as soon as uh, Judith and Shannon were saying all these different things. I'm like, oh God, we just had a conference about that. Oh my God, we just touched on that. Um, So for example, when we talk about burnout, you know, next week we have a conference focused on, you know, the disengaged employee. And we all know that burnout uh, can contribute to someone being disengaged in their work. When we talk about women advancing to the next level in their careers, a few months back, we had a, a conference focused on strategies to take your seat at the table, you mm-hmm. know, so we listen to what our constituents are saying, and then we go back, and I work very closely with our regional networking uh, committee, for example, who leads the efforts for our conferences, and we all talk as a group about, you know, these are some of the concerns of, the, of, of our, our members, what can we do programmatically to address these issues. So yes, we, we hear exactly the same thing that you hear there. So, so how, how is it that you guys did, how do you develop your conference and webinar programs? Like, do you vet women in the industry yes. or is this basically from your council by, by conversating with your council? It's, it's actually a combination of things. Um, okay. we, use, we actually use our council and our committee members quite a bit because that's what they're there for. They're there to lend their support and, and provide us with guidance and advice. So, okay. for example, just to give you an idea of how we work, um, when we put on our networking and leadership conferences, we come together within the committee. Uh, we talk about the topic at hand. And then the members will start to say, you know what, I know so-and-so at XYZ company, I'll reach out to that person or someone who knows someone who knows someone. So we really use the talent that we have um, in order to help us move our mission forward. So that is really the purpose of these committees. Um, They're there to um, provide advice and guidance. And, And that means you know, helping us to secure leaders, helping us to um, develop out the content um, that we deliver. Um, So yes, we do a a really good vetting process. We don't want just anyone coming before our our constituents. We want someone um, who has a story to tell Um, because with our conferences, it's, it's a lot about inspiring the next generation of leaders or even current leaders to continue on. And so it's very refreshing to have someone come to the mic or, well, the Zoom mic (laughs) Um, and, you know, and and kind of share their journey. And it's been a success so far. So Shannon and Judith, have have you guys participated in any Hygieia Network conferences and or webinars? And what are some of the takeaways that, that you've experienced while participating? So I've had the opportunity to participate and I would say about seven of them so far. And there's so many great uh, events that are coming up. I'm excited about the calendar that, that I see that's been put forward from a takeaway standpoint, there's been so many different things. I think about the one, um, 
that we just had recently where there was some really great breakout rooms and the conversation that's happening in the breakout rooms and the idea share. You know, I think I left one meeting that, and I had probably four pages of notes of things that we could apply, but I'm taking that not just within our own organization, but also working with some of our distribution partners and talking about some of these same things and how they can leverage some of those ideas that are coming out of these different pieces and then applying that in other work that I'm doing for volunteer within the community. So there's just so many different attributes and pieces that you can get out of it. I know the one with Christine Haddad, you know, there, she's got a great conference that's coming up. She's a young professional that started off in this industry and she's, she's authored a couple of books now and just watching her business scale is so inspiring. I would love to hear some of those stories from Canada because I know that we've got a wealth of a network here where some of those same stories can be brought out. So I know Lori Armitage from SD, one of our members as well. She's co-authored a book, Women Let's Rise. So we're using that book as well to give out at some of our events that we're doing in the local marketplaces because there's so many great women that we can all learn from. How about you, Judith? So yes, I totally agree with uh, Shannon. I always love the breakout rooms because that's where you're going to learn the most. Um, obviously, the presentations are very engaging and uh, very informative, lots to learn all the time. Uh, but for me, again, it's what the network is about, networking, right? So the breakout rooms just give you so much more and you get to meet people and it just builds that um, the confidence that you can actually talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one or maybe two or three. It's easier to share, right? So I love that. Okay, so what about the shy ladies out there like myself? How does the Hygieia Network assist these ladies to be successful? Tanya, you are not shy. I will <laughs> say that. <laughs> not when I'm talking to you, you're not shy. But I'm the same way. Sometimes I can be shy around certain in certain scenarios. So I do understand that because I can go either way. Um, well, one way that we do that is to encourage women to join our mentoring program. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you're in a one-on-one -on -one relationship. You're not speaking in front of a group of people. You know, you're just with your, your mentor and you're learning about some strategies that you can use um, in order to, you know, do your work more effectively in order to be able to communicate, you know, internally, you know, with your manager. I mean, so the mentor is there to help guide you provide you with advice, um, provide you with some of the best practices that they've used in their career that you can apply to your work. And so, like I said, this is a, just a great opportunity. And Hygieia, um, as Judith and, and Shannon um, uh, mentioned, you know, it offers a one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship with a leader, mm -hmm. along with a professional in the industry. They work together for six months. They meet via email, telephone, Zoom conferencing, or however they want to set that up. Um, and in the end, they can extend that relationship to another six months or so. And so when a person walks away from that, I mean, they're walking away with like new knowledge that they didn't have before. I mean, mm -hmm. I could imagine the relationship that our mentors are having with their mentees. And we've heard so many great responses. I would say 70% um, of our, our participants are, are in favor of the program and they had a wonderful experience with their, with their mentor and vice versa. Um, so that's just one way, especially if you just want to just stay close to one person and you're not into, you know, talking with a group of people. Mentoring is, is the way to go with that. Well, wow, okay. So Judith, as, as a mentor, what does, what does that look like? What, what is your role and, and what are the benefits to this program and how does it help? So um, definitely it is a, a relationship that has to be based on trust. So we have to trust each other. Um, and then also there has to be chemistry, just like with any other relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So I think developing that right in the get-go is that are we a good match? And uh, are we going to be able to work together? Because this is work, you know, um, the, the mentoree is working on themselves to have a better um uh, better work life, better knowledge, better experience and things like that. And just having having discussions. I I myself, I've had a lot of mentors and I almost call it like a, a business psychologist because <laughs> it's just such a 
it's almost like talking to a professional about the challenges that I'm facing or anything that's going on in my life. And it's also, it's personal. Like a lot of times for me as a business owner, it's all in one bucket. <laughs> so it's, it's really good to talk to somebody for me who is going to be able to give me some advice, some experience sharing or anything like that. So, um, there, there are so many benefits of this program. Like just, just so many benefits. I mean, just, just, you know, just imagine that you don't actually have to pay for a business coach. And a lot of people pay a lot of money for a business coach. So if you look at the monetary value, there's huge, but money is nothing because just what you're going to be learning and what you're going to be taking away is just going to be invaluable for the rest of your life, especially for somebody who's young. Yeah, nice. Shannon, do you have anything to add to that? I know you're a big proponent to the to the mentoring program as well. You know, there's so many different ways that you can take value out of this. So I found, you know, even within our own network and team members that have seeked out mentoring or um, have used some of the platforms, what they're finding is some of those crucial and critical conversations that have been really difficult for them to have, they're getting advice from others as to how to handle some of those conversations, which is really great. But it's also understanding the social styles and the different types of personalities that you're interacting with. You were touching on those individuals that may be a little more introverted and shy, and how do you help them identify with their own personality and their social styles, but be able to advocate for themselves and get that information out there. So putting their skill set to use, it could be, you know, maybe the way that you need to communicate instead of trying to be at the front of the classroom and raising your hand, if that's not what, what drives you, then how can you interject in that conversation and get your point across? So maybe using the chat line or other ways that you can communicate to really get your voice heard. So I think that there's so much that's being taken away from it and how people can apply that in their everyday life. I'm loving to see the progression of some of these folks and what they're doing. And I know that it's because they're being mentoring in the background that they're actually putting that to work. Wow, that's awesome. So Judith, you had, you had mentioned about the chemistry and when and when, when, when the ISSA Hygiene Network is matching up mentors with mentees, Felicia, maybe you can chime in. How, mm -hmm. how, what does that look like? How, how do you match up the mentors with the mentees? Yes, yes. It's almost like match.com. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, but uh, actually, it's not like match.com. Well, there's got to be some kind of a chemistry you know. thing there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, actually, it's a very robust system, and we will be rolling out um, our new platform in a couple days. Um, same concept. It'll have the same link. But what happens is you join to be a mentor or a mentee. So once you're in the pool of mentors and mentees, a mentor can search for a mentee of interest. And so um, the system will have this algorithm algorithm on the back end to kind of match you in terms of showing you uh, maybe three top, you know, mentees you could should consider or three top mentors you okay. can consider. And so that actually appears on the screen. And so you can actually click on that mentor and check out their profile, see if it's a good fit. Um, and so if it is a good fit for you, you would send them a message and say that you want to connect with that person. And so it's really up to the mentor to accept that connection. So I tell people, if they don't hear back um, from a mentor that they selected, be patient, give them up, you know, a week or two because maybe they're traveling or, or busy. But if they don't hear from uh, the person, they could always go back into the database and select another mentor. Um, and so the mentee can, you know, it can be the mentor selecting the mentee or the mentee selecting the mentor. Um, so it's a really user-friendly uh, platform. Uh, we provide resources on the platform. Um, I post, you know, information about upcoming events. Um, it's really like a nice tight-knit community of people from across the industry. And I will say this, yeah. our mentees and mentors are able to connect with folks from different companies. So it's not all about connecting with someone from your own organization. However, if you join our exclusive mentoring program, that program is designed for one company only. So you're connecting with someone from your company and you have a presence on like your own little category on our platform. 
Okay. So Felicia, if I could just add to that, one of the, the pieces that I think there's um, always a hesitation about is I don't have time to do this mm. if it's during business hours. So I know that with, with my, my mentee, we've been able to connect on the weekends or on a night that it worked better for both of us because yeah, you do get caught up in the day to day and you don't have time for that. So the platform does allow you to connect at the time that's best suited for both individuals, making it easier so that you don't feel like, Oh, well, I've got this two o'clock on Friday and I actually have five other meetings. I don't really have the time to invest. You want to be relaxed and enjoy the time with each other because there isn't a commitment and an investment there. So those weekends and nights are, are great as well. I like that, Shannon. Thank you so much for saying that, um, because I think a person is really just thinking about connecting during the week. But I love the fact that you are making connections on the weekend and in the evenings. That's excellent. Yes. Also, people tend to forget about their lunchtime. Sometimes the lunchtime is like so unused and and whatnot. And especially here in Calgary, it's like minus 30. You don't want to go out for a walk. (laughs) (laughs) Surely it's it's not minus 30 there today. Yeah. Yeah. But but you know what I'm saying is just it's just use use your time efficiently as well. Because sometimes the lunch time can just be such a you know useless time. A lot of people just eat at their desks or whatever that is. So um yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the Canada region, Shanna. Why I'm passionate about it? <laughs> I know, I know, I know you've been chomping just to get talking about it. What was your driving force to get this going? And, wh- and where do you see it going? <laughs> so I love the Hygieia experience. Where I felt a little left, left out, though, was when I was put into a region in the US that I know nothing about their landscape. I know nothing about that region and felt like I could see the odd Canadian phone number showing up on the screen, (laughs) but there just wasn't enough. Right, Judith, let's go flames. But there just wasn't enough connectivity with, with women in Canada. And so as I started to go out and travel and talk a little bit more about the Hygiene Network, I was finding that women didn't know about this opportunity. And we really wanted to create a region for Canada because we are a diverse landscape as well. And in particular, Quebec is one of those regions where we've got a very different language. We've got a different vibe and there just isn't a place for women in Canada to really connect at this level. And especially I found in Quebec that there was this this gap and we wanted to close that gap. So I'm really excited about having the opportunity to help build and shape this region in Canada. But where do I see it going? Oh, I see it going so far. Uh, I love the (laughs) idea of us having uh, like what we did in Calgary and having the cupcakes and cocktails, but there's lots of networking opportunities. It doesn't always have to be a nighttime uh, get together. I'd love to see us be able to do some breakfast meetings in each of the regions across the country. And then I would love to see us have regions within Canada at some point Mm -hmm. in time, being able to build that out. We are one country and we need to operate together within this country. So I love that we've got 80 members. I think we probably have like 82 at the end of this call, (laughs) Uh, but I'd love to see us get more women together so that we can actively participate and share in this wealth of experience that we have and showcase some of the the diversity that we've got in this industry. It's incredible. So Felicia, ISSA Hygiene Network now has a total of eight eight regions. So what are the benefits of these regions? And does does it provide a platform for people to find solutions to challenges that may be region specific? Well, you know what, it does. And I tell people really the goal of the regions is to connect engage and participate. Okay. Connect, engage, participate. Um, And so really we do that a couple ways. You know, we have our LinkedIn groups. And so as you stated, we have eight regions on LinkedIn. And so that affords a person an opportunity to go on, share an article, share a article about women's leadership, share a a quote that you saw, um, you know, ask a question to the group. And so I do tell people, do not get discouraged if someone does not like your post or respond to your post. But I will tell you, people will read what you posted. And even though they may not have commented within the group setting on LinkedIn, they may still take that information and apply 
something to something they're dealing with um, in, in the workplace, if it's, a, if it's something related to that. So our LinkedIn groups are a way for people to kind of still network with each other online. Um, they can message each other. They can share resources. They can learn more about upcoming events that are happening within the region. So for example, um, Shannon was able to post information about the reception they recently held. Um, and so we also post information about upcoming conferences and so forth and so on. But also too, it's a great way for people to eventually get back to the in-person, more of that in-person activity. Absolutely. We use the online community as like a, a way for us to, to put our message out there, to let you know what's happening. But that in-person event, that's where that true connection is being made because you know, you're face to face, yeah. you're gaining new knowledge. Like, for example, uh, uh, Shannon had the cups and cocktails. You know, you could do a workshop. You can have like a, a keynote presenter, uh, maybe come on for 30 minutes and give a presentation. And then at the end, have a networking opportunity for folks to come together and network. Um, so, you know, so the goal is just to be able to share all of the educational resources that we have with these women, share information about our mentoring platform, provide them with a space to network. And I, I must tell you, networking is critical for the success of your career. Um, I Can I just go off record a little bit and, and tell you a scenario? I have been approached over the past year of women who are a part of Hygieia, either as a member, a committee member, what, whatever. I mean, I would honestly say I was approached by four women telling me, Felicia, I got a promotion or Felicia, I'm starting a new job or Felicia. I mean, I'm telling you, that is the power of Hygieia. I'm not saying that's because of us in terms of why they're getting the promotions or moving on. Um, but I will say, I think it, it plays a role. Uh, because we have equipped them with valuable information. We've provided them with an opportunity to be connected either virtually or face-to-face -face with some of the key decision makers out there. And, you know, when you're liking Hygieia's post and your people at these companies are recognizing what you have a passion for. Yeah. And if, if they consistently see you putting likes uh, against, you know, something that Hygieia has done. I mean, it's a, it's a real, it's a plus for them. I think that's just my opinion. <laughs> but to, going on on that, you're, you're absolutely right, Felicia, because I know for me personally, if you're around somebody who's enthusiastic and passionate for what they do, it breathes new life into what you do in your capacity. And I think mm -hmm. to some level would, would, would make your confidence that much more. And, and, and that's why I can see, I can see this, this really, really taking off. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. speaking on that, how do people get involved in the interest oh. of time? Cause some yes. people might have questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Really quickly. Um, Hygieia is free to join Hygieia. Uh, currently free to join Hygieia. You go to hygienetwork.org forward slash join. If you go to our, our website, Hygieia Network, you'll, you'll see the join uh, tab there. Um, once you join, like I said, it gives you an opportunity to join a region, one of the LinkedIn regions. You'll be added to our database so you can get more information about our upcoming events, programs, mentoring program. Um, and so it's just a really straightforward process in terms of how to join. Quite simple. Go to our website. Um, it should take you maybe one minute, 30 seconds to a minute to complete the information. So, and I'll just say uh, for our next ISSA Hygiene Network Canada region, we've got a special panel discussion planned for Wednesday, June 8th at 845 during ISSA Show Canada in Toronto. Shannon, would you like to outline what that session looks like? Yeah, absolutely. And so don't forget to mention the breakfast. That's, that's right. So we will be serving a free breakfast. However, uh, the, it's not just about the breakfast. It certainly is about making those connections. So we've got uh, representatives on our panel from manufacturing in Canada, distribution in Canada. Uh, Judith is representing our residential contract cleaners. And uh, we also have a national contract cleaner that is part of that. And then we have Laura Craven that will be representing Hygieia as well on the panel. And really, we want to talk about women in our industry. How do we 
keep recruitment and selection happening, reward and recognition, and really just what can we do to bring more value uh, to individuals within our organization and really help that succession planning for women in our industry. So I'm really excited about this panel. I know there's been a lot of great um, commentary so far that's being built out. And I really hope that everyone on this call gets the opportunity to join us at ISSA Canada and uh, certainly stop in check into the Hygia booth or find those of us that might have badges on there that say, ask me about Hygia and we'll be happy to help you out with some of this. It's a great opportunity to just showcase what we do. And I love that that's the dustbane blue. So thank you for that. <laughs> love the color. Oh, Hygia blue, same thing. Yeah. And the Hygia <laughs> network will be represented in the yes. ISSA Canada booth. Yes. which we, we will be right at the top of the escalator as you enter the building. Yes. So with that said, we don't have a lot of time, but are there any questions? I just wanted to make a comment. It's not a question. Absolutely. But Felicia, you're an educator mm -hmm. and we all have that one person, that one teacher, that one mentor that had said something to us or made a difference in our lives. And I think that's how we need to think what that feeling was and how good that was. And I think that's what Hygieia is providing is that door for you to feel that good again, because somebody's going to tell you something or help you with something. So it's a really, really great network. So I really hope people will join and people will, you know, ask for mentorship or, or also um, being a mentee, a mentor, right? Yes. Thank you so much, Judith. That was that's, fantastic. That's awesome. Well, guys, that comes to the end of our session. I just want to thank you ladies for providing such fantastic information today. And thank, thank you to all our participants for taking an hour of your day to join us. Uh, and if you haven't already done so, please register to attend ISSA Show Canada. You can get the details at www.issashowcanada.com. And if you can't attend the show, be sure to join us for next month's Coffee Talk Forum on Wednesday, June the 22nd. Thank you, everybody, and hope Thank to you. see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. See you soon. Thank you.